pumpkin. And another pumpkin. Soon we'll be making more Scotch Bonnet mango hot sauce and Scotch Bonnet pineapple salsa. The Scotch Bonnets are turning yellow. Every little bit counts. These ones are going to be going into the freezer because I like to make my sauce with cherry tomatoes and Roma tomatoes. Saving them for later. Artichoke. Yay. I've been washing and drying and freezing bunches and bunches of kale for later, for stews and soups. Kale is so good for you. It's one of our favorite things that come out of the garden. But up next, I'm going to show you our favorite way to eat kale. So again, I add a little bit of vinegar to my water. I'm cleaning my vegetables. I'm going to freeze them, but what I'm going to do is core out the centers and I'm going to leave these for stuffing peppers when we want to add some leftover meats or cheeses and roast them in the oven. Amazing. I won't be canning those. Finish ripening right here on the table and we'll throw these in the freezer for sauce for later. Have some poblano peppers and banana peppers, some more peas, and of course the kale. We picked these jalapenos together yesterday and these tomatoes. These tomatoes will also go into the freezer for sauce for later. As for the jalapenos, we will be canning those up together. For cutting, just go around the outside of the pepper. Got to make it kind of wide because you are going to be stuffing them. Pop that right out. If you're going to be saving seeds, great time to save seeds right there. Make a grapefruit spoon. And just take out anything extra and give it a tip. Great for stuffing. The smaller banana peppers, I just go ahead and cut off the top. Just run that grapefruit spoon around the inside. And there you go. And now they're going in the freezer and we'll bag them up later. Another thing done today. Making some kale chips. You got to try this, guys. So all I do is pour some olive oil on the pan. I'm sure you could use another oil. I must be honest, we've been making this for probably 15 years. It's my mother's recipe. And mm, olive oil is kind of the way to go. So if you're going to try it for the first time and you're not even a kale lover, I would go with an olive oil. Not extra virgin, but definitely a good olive oil. So all you do is pour some olive oil on the cookie sheet, sprinkle a bunch of salt in that olive oil, grab your kale, and roll it around.
you can, um, you know, put this into a bowl if you'd like and do it that way and not mix it with your hands. But I'd rather dirty one pan. You might hear Jason outside mowing. Got to get those chores done. Kale chips are so good, there's just no way that you can eat just one. Okay, so they're all coated and now they're going in a 400 degree oven. Now remember, kale is very thin. You really shouldn't leave the kitchen for long, but you do want them to get crispy. You want them to look like this. I dare you to eat just one. So even if you're not a kale lover, you may wanna give this a try. And if you are a kale lover, oh, oh, please give it a try. And then let us know in the comments if you liked kale chips. So guys, I'm all about texture. I love crunchy things. Ah, oh, I honestly, lost my taste and smell back in December of 2020 and I can't even taste that kale or any of the recipes or any of the fresh garden vegetables that I'm growing in the garden right now can't taste any of them this is why I'm thankful that I'm following my recipes to a T so that my food is still delicious for anyone else eating it Jason says every once in a while oh it needed a little more salt or it needed a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that unless it's a fresh lemon or lime like a sour taste or if it's salty or spicy I really don't taste anything guys and I think it's more of my mouth reacting so back to the kale I love crispy kale listen to the crunch Oh yeah, baby. Kale chips, my opinion, better than potato chips and so much more healthy for you. Mm. Just putting myself out there. Just keeping it real. I'm probably going to eat all this kale before Jason gets in the house. Sprinkle the salt. I saved some for Jason. I'm dehydrating a little bit more sage. It's really not a lot, but... I brought some in for dinner tonight to go with our chicken and I figured well this is a little bit too much for dinner so I'll throw it in the dehydrator since I'm running it anyways cutting up some chives Chives. Time to dehydrate. I'm also making some lemon balm salve and I need to dehydrate a little bit more lemon balm because we need four cups. And I'm about a cup short. So I'll dehydrate a little bit more. I just froze Roma and cherry tomatoes for sauce for later. And of course those stuffers, the poblanos and the banana peppers that we can stuff with yummy goodness later. Remember those peppers we picked together? Well, today we're going to preserve them. 
So today I'm going to be doing the four cherry peppers, some banana peppers, and I chopped up some of those jalapenos. So instead of just doing rings, there's also recipes where I enjoy little small pieces of jalapeno. So I figured I might as well do a few jars of that versus cutting them up later. In the banana peppers and in the cherry peppers, I added a pinch of turmeric. I warmed up the brine. The sound every canner hates to hear, yeah. Little mess to clean up in the water bath canner. We lost one jar. It's gonna happen every once in a while. I leave peaches in the hot water for about a minute, take them right out, and I put them into an ice bath. The skins peel off much easier. Peach jam. While I cut up the peaches, I added a quarter cup of bottled lemon juice to the peaches to stop the browning process. We wanna keep that beautiful yellow orangey color. I add a quarter cup of sugar mixed in with that lemon juice so it starts breaking down all of those peaches and draws out all that delicious juice. It'll be less cooking time. This is a no pectin jam recipe. So again, we are going to simmer this down to the consistency that we want for jam. This recipe has three cups of sugar. You are allowed to add up, up to four cups of sugar, depending on the sweetness of your peaches. Okay, we brought it up to a boil and now we're gonna add our sugar. And I'm starting off with three cups. Now I'm just gonna let this simmer until it becomes the consistency I like. And then we're gonna jar it up. Remember, hand tight, not Superman tight, just hand tight. As the jam is boiling away, I noticed a turkey in the yard. Let me show you. And no, I did not can up this little jar of peach jam, but I did put it in this cute little jar, and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator, 
so Jason can have it on a bagel this weekend. Candy, dandy, for storing sugar. Vanilla beans and sugar is amazing. So if you've been following along with us for a little while, I just made a batch of strawberry rhubarb jam. I'm going to be doing the same recipe. The only difference is it's eight cups of rhubarb versus four cups of strawberries and four cups of rhubarb. Again, not using any pectin in this recipe. Two tablespoons of lemon juice, and I sprinkled about a half a cup of sugar over the rhubarb, just to start breaking down the rhubarb and releasing some of the juices with the help of the sugar. And we're gonna let this simmer for quite a while and bring it up to a boil. Okay guys, that rhubarb started to get soft. I was able to use the blender and I blended it right up. I added four cups of sugar, mixed it in really well. Now I'm adding a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and a quarter teaspoon of allspice. Okay, that's all blended together. Almost looks like an applesauce. <laughs> if you are not going to try putting this rhubarb jam into breads, or any other baking recipes and this color is not appealing to you basically applesauce on your toast or whatever you put jam on you can add a few drops of uh, red food coloring at this point and it'll be red and pretty for you because I do use this in bread recipes I like mine very thick so instead of using oil, I use this. So some people use applesauce in their recipes. I use this rhubarb jam. So today we put another four jars of jam in the pantry for later. Every bit counts. If you guys have been following along with us for a while, you know that Jason and I love to mow. And I'm in charge of the back 40, shall we call it? And Jason does all the pretty lines in the front of the house. Back here, I don't have to be pretty, it just needs to get mowed up. And I did some trimming, as you can see. So I could still get through there with the mower. I'm already out here picking berries. I also do a little trimming and sit down when I need to. And some more blackberries. Aren't they pretty? And they're just everywhere. We should go check out the fox den since we're here. So this fox den is probably one of the farthest ones on our property away from our house. The other ones are even closer. But right here we always find black trumpet mushrooms, coral mushrooms, porcini bolete mushrooms. 
I don't see any yet except for the coral, but yay. We'll come back. So we have bank beavers here on our land. Pretty destructive animals. They're really cool. Beavers are cool, but they're also very destructive. And right now they're grabbing all of these branches. Some they pull right down to the hole and bring it right on in. They're just piling it up for the winter time. Let me show you over here. They've been digging through. This is almost going to collapse and they're going to have another air hole. So you see where you can see the water? That's because they literally have dug trenches in the mud. So even when water levels are low, they still have water to swim in to go from hole to hole. Bank beavers. I'm just keeping my voice down because, you know, maybe I'll see something. The wind is going from the northwest south. So my scent is going all the way back to my house. <laughs> so if I'm lucky enough to see an animal, it's going to be down here on this end. So let me show you this. This is coral mushroom. I'll put the exact name of it right up here for you. Isn't this gorgeous? I was here yesterday and this wasn't here. This literally grew overnight. It's right on the trail. This is one of my favorite spots because we also get porcini mushrooms. Gotta love porcinis. It's a bolete mushroom. We'll be getting those soon, hopefully. But look at it all. It is everywhere. Yay, mushroom time. Mud always tells the story. Just found a chanterelle mushroom and some very old ones. Let's see what else we can find. Okay, so since I was out here, I decided to put the trail cams up. Kill two birds with one stone. These aren't even buggy yet, which is great.
deer trail. There's a deer bed about 25 feet from my deer stand. Yay. Just look at the size of them. One thing that's really nice about blackberries is that they turn purple at different times <laughs> so you don't lose a whole bunch. They love these cool nights and warm days. Perfect for growing any fruit. You see how the blackberries are losing all of their leaves? Because all of their energy is going right into those berries and keeping them going. All these red ones still have to turn purple. Just like in your garden, same thing. Some of your plants will start dying back now here in the end of August. Because all that energy is going to go into your crop. There's a pair of nuthatch. They're not happy that I walked this close to their nest. But, you know, I have berries to pick, so they'll get over it. And another 16 cups. And another 16 cups. Another 16 cups of blackberries going in the freezer. Packaging up another 16 cups of blackberries for later. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us here at PJ's Homestead Adventure. Don't forget to use that hashtag Every Bit Counts Challenge to follow along with Jessica at Three Rivers Homestead and all the other great channels that are harvesting and preserving this month here in August. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.